Porsche, Lamborghini, Ferrari. That's right, today we're talking about exotics. Yeah, Miatas are cool, but I didn't have a poster of one on my wall as a kid. But who's ruling the exotic car market today? Are the same heroes from your childhood still at top? Or has new technologies and up and coming companies forced the juggernauts to their knees? We took a good hard look at the market to see what's what in the exotic car world today. So stick around as we run down our list of the fastest, most luxurious, and most awe-inspiring car companies today. Today on Idealist, the top 20 exotic car brands ranked from worst to best. And I think you're gonna be surprised with a few of my picks. Let's go. Hey guys, Chubbs and me and the rest of the Ideal team are thankful for all your guys' support this year. And I have a question or more of a favor to ask from each of you. Could you go subscribe to our other YouTube channel, Ideal Money, where we cover things that you need to know about entrepreneurship, investing, and wealth creation. Hey Chubbs, you wanna get rich together? All right, well, thank you for subscribing. You can subscribe up here or hit the link down in the description. Let's get back to that ra de Cool. Radical is the first of many British manufacturers on our list. You've probably never seen one in person, and if you have, it was probably at the track. That's because the Radical doesn't make cars to drive on the road. They make street legal cars designed to race. While a dedicated track day toy is a huge flex, that's all Radical cars are really useful for. Powered by engines ripped almost straight out of Hibusa street bikes or a Ford EcoBoost and weighing only 1,500 pounds at most, depending on equipment, these cars are proper track weapons. And they are technically street legal, but street legal doesn't really mean dealable, unfortunately. And while you'll be making sacrifices for just about any car in this video, the Radical has you sacrificing the most. And that's not your ex-girlfriend, that's your car. So be careful. While their cars are perfect if all you want is a dedicated track toy, if you want an exotic that's easier to live with, you might be better off elsewhere. Another British manufacturer, Arash, tends to stay a bit hidden from the limelight. If you're a regular at Goodwood Festival of Speed, then you'd know it's a boutique supercar brand that's been known for low production numbers and even lower track times. Their flagship, the hybrid AF10, which produces over 2,000 horsepower with the company's aptly named Warp Drive drivetrain, which they tout as being built with spaceship technology. Yeah, really? Arash also has a new hypercar called the Imperium, which can be ordered with four 600 kilowatt motors and is made of lightweight carbon plastic 3D printed material. While these cars are no doubt incredible to drive, they're unbelievably exclusive, as Arash produces just three cars a year. Sounds like you better get on the waiting list right now if you're interested. Okay, come here, come here. Elephant in the room time. The Zenvo ST1 was probably the most infamous car to ever be featured on Top Gear. Catching fire on its second visit to the track after braking on its first, the Zenvo eventually set a wet, cold lap time slower than a Ford Focus ST, and became pretty much the butt of any supercar joke for years after. That was almost a decade ago though, and since then, Zenvo has been keeping quiet, refocusing on quality over quantity. Each model in the current Zenvo lineup produces over 1,100 horsepower, and the TSR1's wing taking active aero to a whole new level, tilting sideways around the corners to help keep the rear tires planted and put down the insane power the V8 engine produces. Seems like Zenvo is back, baby. Okay, you like luxury, and if diamond-encrusted headlights don't say luxury, well, what does? W Motors got famous when Lycan Hypersport carried Dominic Toretto and Brian O'Connor as they jumped over the shark. I mean, between skyscrapers and Fast and Furious 7? The Dubai supercar company is still pretty new and has yet to really prove itself against the big boys. But their new Fenner Supersport looks to build on their legacy and begin to cement W Motors as one of the grown-ups at the table in the exotic car world. The Fenner Supersport will also have a larger production with 110 planned. But with five of the first 10 going into one businessman's private collection, it still might take action heroes to free them from their garages. Hey, I got a question for you. You remember Noble? Well, we do. 
If you don't, well, we can't blame you. The small British supercar brand has sat dormant for quite a while. After riding the coattails of the shockingly fast M600 for years, Noble is planning to reintroduce itself to the market with the M500 in late 2022. The M600 was able to take down Paganis, Bugattis, and Lamborghinis on the Top Gear test track with a price tag around £200,000 and a Volvo XC90's V8. The M500, as the name suggests, will be a bit more entry level and will use a turbo Ford 3.5 liter V6 to produce a similar yet calmer experience. Sad to say the new Noble's stepping back a bit in terms of performance, but hey, it's better than nothing, right? Italian supercar design with a thousand US Freedom Eagles under the hood? Sign me up! The Hyundai Elantra? Wait, no. The Mazzanti Avanta is the brainchild of Luca Mazzanti, who set out to create a hypercar that the owners actually want to drive. Mazzanti worked closely with their buyers to tailor their cars to meet their needs in every way, from custom interiors to multiple drivetrain packages, all of which center around the Chevy LS. If you see a Mazzanti, you know it's handcrafted to the person behind the wheel. But if there's one note to leave Mazzanti on, it's the incredible sound of their 1200 horsepower twin turbo Avantra Mille Cavalli. Maserati has been passed around from owner to owner for years now, which is just a shame for a company that has so much heritage to its name. While today Maserati is known for sporty cars that are fantastic to drive when they aren't breaking down or depreciating, Maserati is producing their first supercar since the Ferrari Enzo-based MC12, the MC20. While they claim the MC20's Netuno twin-turbo V6 is fully designed by Maserati, our friends at Car and Driver criticized the statement and pointed out numerous similarities between not only other Ferrari motors, but also Alfa Romeos, another company under the same ownership. Still though, if you're gonna be in anyone's part bin, well, isn't Ferrari a pretty great one to be in? While Hennessy might be best known as an American tuning company, their supercar projects are truly special. Having based the original Venom models on the Dodge Viper, and then a Lotus Exige, the Venom F5 is the company's first ground up build. And boy, is it good. Whoa! Let's cut right to the chase. 1800 horsepower. That doesn't scream America. And maybe the 6.6 liter V8's exhaust note does? Following Hennessy's trend of top speed focused machines, the Venom F5 has a claimed top speed of over 300 miles per hour. While Hennessy hasn't hit that mark just yet in practice, knowing them, it won't be long until they do. Few people have as much clout in the supercar world as Gordon Murray. Largely responsible for the McLaren F1, Murray has now started his own company to produce more iconic vehicles, starting with the T50, which is heavily based on the F1, as you can see. The T50 makes incredible strides in technology with fan-assisted active aero, but keeps the old-school feel alive with a six-speed H-pattern gearbox, and by sticking to the good old mid-engine, rear-wheel drive internal combustion setup. There's no doubt Gordon Murray will grow into the market with more cars, such as the planned T33, inspired by cars such as the Ferrari Dino and the Lamborghini Mura. But until then, Gordon Murray Automotive has gotten on a huge foothold in the exotic car world and can only go up from here. SCC, not to be confused with SEC, you know, the football conference, was the first brand to dethrone the Bugatti Veyron as the fastest car in the world in 2007 with the SSC Ultimate Aero. Ever since then, they've been focused on one thing, pure speed. The SSC Tuatara is the most recent example of this, having reached a verified one-way top speed in May of 2022 of 294 miles per hour. With a 1,750 horsepower V8, the Tuatara doesn't need any more power, but you can still get it if you want it. The quote-unquote aggressor version of the Tuatara is no longer street legal, has a 2,250 horsepower rating. Despite some early questionable claims, SSC has yet to actually hit 300 miles per hour. They sure aren't far off now. 
While most exotic cars are known for crazy horsepower and massive engines, Lotus over the past few decades has been known for lightweight, nimble roadsters that were exciting yet attainable. The Elan, the Elise, and the Exige, and the Evora. <laughs> Lotus has built some of the greatest entry-level exotics history has ever offered, not to mention the beautiful Esprit. With Lotus's ice era coming to an end though, the Amira will carry the torch as the final gasoline Lotus, but not to worry, as the 2000 horsepower Lotus Avija electric hypercar reaffirms Lotus's performance dedication going forward. Even if <laughs> it is a little bit pricey for my uh, lint-filled pockets. Any car good enough for James? James Bond is <laughs> good enough for me. Aston Martin has stayed in its lane for most of its life, sticking closely to Grand Tours, apart from a few models like the Lagonda, the 177, and of course, the Signet. But now with crossovers joining the ranks, they balanced it out with their very first hypercar, the Valkyrie. The 1160 horsepower machine uses a high-tech hybrid system to deliver power to the rear wheels. And despite being their first step into the hypercar world, the $3 million Valkyrie helps cement Aston Martin as a brand that isn't going anywhere soon. Too bad they don't come with ejector seats standard. <laughs> Much like the Zenvo, the Rimac is probably most well known for misfortunes it suffered at the hands of Top Gear presenters. While Richard Hammond famously crashed one of the first Rimac Concept 1 vehicles on the Grand Tour, the company has made massive strides since then, and even merged with Bugatti in 2021. While the all-electric automaker might not be the favorite among internal combustion enthusiasts, the stats of the Rimac Nevera are nothing short of astounding. Over 1,900 horsepower, 1,700 foot-pounds of torque, 0 to 60 in under 2 seconds, and 180 miles an hour in under 10? Just look at this thing! It's incredible! Pagani solidified itself as one of the most important exotic companies early on with the Zonda. And if you're curious about Pagani, go check out this overdrive up here, all about Pagani and how, well, Lamborghini got rid of them. They fired them. They got goodbye. They're incredibly high performance vehicles laced with high exclusivity. And this has made Pagani one of the most elusive companies in the world, and for good reason. Pagani has always been incredibly performance focused, with multiple track records in its history. A few cars show that as much as the Zonda R. With the Huayra replacing the Zonda in 2011, it has felt like forever since we have gotten a new car from Horacio Pagani. Thankfully, back in September, the Pagani Utopia was announced. While the price and finer details of the Utopia aren't known, all 99 have already been assigned to customers. So start looking in the used classifieds if you want one. Famous for multiple top speed records and for future waking up in one once, Bugatti has been known as the benchmark of what successful hypercars are. The Veyron changed the entire supercar and hypercar landscape when it debuted, and nothing has had quite the effect on the exotic car world ever since. Bugatti also technically broke the 300 mile per hour barrier for a production car back in 2019, though the feat wasn't performed in line with quote unquote official record guidelines, it didn't stop Bugatti from gloating with the Chiron Supersport 300 plus. From here though, Bugatti has said they're done chasing speed records and are gonna focus on huh, other areas. I guess even Bugatti has room to improve. Porsche has always been one of the biggest names in sports cars for decades. From the days of James Dean and the little bastard Porsche 550 to pioneering 1980s technology with the Porsche 959 to the modern day with the 911, which continues to improve almost 60 years after production. Porsche has made some of the coolest cars you could ever own. And while Porsche is known for incredible hypercars like the 918 and the Carrera GT, Porsche also made their performance available to huge audiences. The sedans, SUVs, before the rise of the boring crossover, and entry-level sports cars like the Cayman, Porsche rides the fine line where its exclusivity, performance, and accessibility meet in a place that can be met by far more people than just about any other car maker on this list. Lamborghini. It's just one of those names when no matter who you're talking to, 
They know exactly what you're talking about and for good reason. It's one of the few marquees that people stop just to take photos of the badge. Ever since the unrivaled beauty of the Mira, often considered as the first hypercar, Lamborghini has turned out hit after hit after hit. Don't believe me? Well, Countach, Diablo, Murcielago, Aventador. The V12 cars serve as the creme de la creme, while the V10 cars give the same high performance, super luxurious experience at a lower cost. That said, Lamborghini models do tend to stick around for years longer than its rivals, with updates to existing chassis taking precedence over complete redesigns. But hey, as my dad says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Classic battle, Ferrari versus Lamborghini, Enzo versus Ferruccio, red versus yellow. This time though, we got Ferrari emerging from the Italian battle victorious. While sometimes it seems like every time you blink, Ferrari has replaced a vehicle in their lineup, their constant evolution makes them on the cutting edge when it comes to new technology and performance. While Lamborghini makes generation-defined supercars, Ferrari makes generation-defining hypercars. The F40, the F50, the Enzo, the LaFerrari, and now the Daytona SP3. Enzo Ferrari always said that he only made road cars to fund his race cars, but that racing pedigree has made Ferrari into one of the greatest companies you can buy a road car from today. Everyone's favorite eggs. Koenigsegg burst onto the exotic car scene around the same time as Pagani and many others on this list. But in the short time, none have thrown quite the same size hat into the ring as Koenigsegg. With their own style as supercar doors, the CCX marked the beginning of what would be a hypercar revolution from the Koenigsegg factory, spawning models that were even crazier to drive than they are to look at, such as the Agera and the Jesco. Koenigsegg continues to innovate with cars like the 1-1, which achieves a one-to-one -one power to weight ratio, and the upcoming Jumeira, which can do 60 in under two seconds and seats a family of four. And the top dog. Well, it's a UK brand, and we have to give it to McLaren. I mean, who didn't see this coming? The legacy started with the timeless F1. McLaren has only impressed in the time since. From the MP4-12C to the GT, the 720S to the Artura, the P1 to the Elva. Speedtail, the Senna, the Solus GT. It seems like every time you turn around, McLaren has once again perfectly balanced style and performance to put yet another legendary car on the road. While they may not have been very active until recent years, if the past decade has been any indicator, the exotic car world is in for a treat as McLaren sets sail into the future. Well guys, there you got it. Our ranking of the top 20 exotic brands in the world. Now, obviously you're probably not gonna agree 100%, but let's talk about it down in the comments below. Also, let us know which one of these cars you would buy if I were to give you a blank check. Thanks for sticking around. Like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell. I've been Brad, this has been Ideal, and check out this Ideal vid up here or what YouTube recommends you watch next down here. Oh, and promise me one thing, keep living the Ideal lifestyle.